What's going on? It's Roger. I just wanted to give a little insight on how I got uh, started in the medical field. Um, I took a basic EKG course. Uh, and the basics, I mean by putting stickers on a patient and hitting the print button, print out the 12 lead EKG, and that was pretty much it. Uh, during that course, I learned a little bit about basic rhythm analysis or basic rhythms and we covered measurements which becomes important in uh, electrocardiography down the line but at the time just just one day of measurements and I'll get into how that changed uh, everything for me so after I got done, done with the course I found out you can probably go about three routes with a uh, EKG certificate <clears throat> Um, the basic route is a EKG technician, which is uh, a lot of times in the morning or whenever they call stat, you'd go to the patient's room, put the stickers on, hit the print button, get the 12 lead, and go put it in the patient's chart. Uh, a lot of places um, during after hours or evening hours, and even even like where I work at, it's not even the EKG technician that actually does the EKGs. It's like respiratory or phlebotomy that does them. Um, <clears throat> the other, the second part of that, uh, of the three routes is uh, being an EKG technician in an EKG lab, <clears throat> which usually is uh, 9 to 5 or 8 to 5, uh, Monday through Friday deal. And usually when you're in there, it's usually stress uh, EKG testing where they put the 12 leads on. They run a, a bigger machine that continuously prints out 12 lead EKGs of, um, of, of your heart as it's being worked. And they're looking for ischemia and any changes that's showing uh, signs of a um, coronary artery disease. And the other part of that EKG lab as well is having a Holter monitor on a patient for 24 or 48 or 72 hours or even up to a week and getting that monitor back and printing up a report for the doctors to read. <clears throat> and the third route is which the route I took um, and, if, and at the time was the only option for me and it's the reason why I took it is telemetry slash monitor technician and what you do as a telemetry technician is that you sit on a floor and you're watching watching multiple patients um, and you're looking for rate and rhythm changes in a patient's heart rate because you know if, if some patients come in for chest pain and you're looking for um, the reason why if it's intermittent maybe um, they're sleeping, it only happens when this during this time, that type of deal where they're trying to solve something and during the normal 12 lead, which is just um, non-continuous, it's uh, normal, but during continuous monitoring, you might catch something. And so that's what telemetry is. <clears throat> I got my start in telemetry on a cardiovascular thoracic unit. And most of the patients that are critically critically ill and I the reason why I say um, during my course we only took basic or rhythm analysis and hardly any, any measurements is because when you become a monitor tech measurements measuring the waves the amplitudes and the times and the intervals become uh, is, is the main thing and uh, like I said, my course didn't cover that in depth. So when I started on this floor and I'm watching 40 patients and they're all there for multiple issues and have uh, complex heart disease, I had to learn quickly. And so I started asking nurses, um, you know, what are they here for, this and that, which I look for. And then my greatest resource was talking to a lot of the cardiologists and uh, electrophysiology uh, doctors you know about the diseases and it came to the point where I asked um, 
one EP fellow like what books to read and he gave me a list and I end up getting those books <clears throat> so we'll go through that list right now um, when I first started I got this book and this is the basic ECG EKG interpretation um, inc made incredibly easy you know one of those books and it did the job for a while it really broke down and gave it like a comic type view and kind of explained things so I got a better grasp Another book that I got, which I didn't really appreciate till later, is the 12 lead EKG in ACS. <clears throat> um, like I said, it's a monotic. You rarely deal with 12 leads. Um, usually, like I said, you're just looking for changes. But if you want to be really good and impress people, you'd want to go in depth with um, with your interpretations when you look at someone's rhythm. <clears throat> and... Uh, I didn't appreciate this till later um, because at first I didn't, uh, like I said, you're not really monitoring 12 leads. Uh, you have derived 12 leads and whatnot, but um, most of the time it's just rhythm rate changes and uh, 12 leads come into play when they actually do catch something significant. Uh, one of the doctors told me classic cardiology book was Practical Electrocardiography by Marriott and it really he's really the godfather of EKG um, I mean great diagram this is an older book as well great diagrams he does a lot of laterograms which uh, it's one of those things that people have to train you to, to learn because it's it ex kind of explains the conduction path but um, it does take a little bit more understanding to do it. Nonetheless, another, like I said, a, a great book. Um, really in-depth in the diagrams and uh, very wordy. But a uh, staple in electrocardiography. Another book, um, classic cardiology, is uh, Rosenbaum's The Hemi Blocks which was, I believe this was made in the 1970s, and it went down the line of uh, explaining the fascicles and, or back then, you know, that they called the hemis, and the blocks that, and how they involve and how they look in different leads and whatnot. But this really helped me out when I was trying to understand and go more in depth in my interpretation compared to just saying, oh, this is a incomplete left bundle branch block. You know, you start looking for the axis deviation, start playing a part into your interpretation. Um, this was another book that I got by Huff, <clears throat> and it was really more of an interpretation book where a lot of places when you go for modern tech, they want you to just basically read the rhythm. And that's what this is. Oh, this is sinus rhythm, early PAC you know early beat and it went down the line of that where you just it just kind of interpret you put your rate the rhythm you learn how to measure all that stuff it does cover you know a lot of stuff the other one was uh that i really wanted to learn mis and this was uh another book that helped me understand uh what goes on in mi and how i figure it out and they had a lot of cases, case studies. So that helped it ease, made it a lot easier for me. Um, a great book. Uh, everyone knows Dubin's book. And as a monitor tech, it's, I think this is highly, uh, highly needed. <laughs> uh, latest edition has the color diagrams. Um, he goes through a lot. And it's, like I said, it's a pretty thick book. Uh, broken out pretty easily and uh, has a little made things to understand for you to understand um, really good book uh, this is another these last four books were, were more in depth and this cardiac arrhythmias uh, a clinical approach is just mostly words and I got it because 
it got into the clinical aspect of um, electrocardiography and arrhythmias. I mean, they'll have this, they'll talk about signal average EKGs, um, for instance, here. But the reason why I got this is because they started going over um, pharmacology. And to me, that was important to understand what medications do for the hearts, you know. This other book is Learning Electrocardiography, a complete course. It's another great book, um, another from the start to the beginning, to the end, to learning the different leads and, and views. Uh, a really good um, book to have a, a base in, a foundation. But the one thing I did like was it taught you how to do uh, vectors, a spatial vector on how uh, leads look like on a on a patient and draw it in 3D. So I thought that was really interesting because you know cardiology goes into vector cardiography and all these other aspects of it. These last two books are probably some of the best that I've ever read. This is another um, Marriott book. Advanced concepts, concepts in arrhythmias, and a lot of latergrams, but great diagrams, great explanations. Um, definitely interesting. One of the one of the better books. I said go a lot more latergrams. Um, definitely uh, a better investment. Um, like I said, I just can't believe, you know, Marriott is, is really in-depth and really good at um, putting content out there. And so this is uh, a good one. And the final book is Electrocardiography in Ischemic Heart Disease, Clinical and Imaging Correlations. And the reason why I liked this book is because um, this really broke it down when you actually look at other modalities. Um, being an echo tech, you kind of understand the walls of the heart. This just makes it a little bit easier. Uh, it does cover MRI and cath lab angios, coronary angios, and um, try to find some of these pages that I, um, like I said, I'm an echo tech, and so see, understanding this with the echo and of course the wall, just the coronary artery distribution amongst the walls, very. Um, you're taught that in in echo, but this is a little bit more in depth. So, really, really awesome book. Um, and advanced advanced concepts, definitely sure. Um, it's like here, you know, you don't you 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 learn about left anterior descending and left circumflex and the right corner artery. But then you start to learn more about the septal branches, inferior walls, and infralateral. I mean, it just gets really, really in-depth. But one of the books that I really learned from, um, septal branch and diagonal branch off the left anterior descending, and what it looked like. Um, yeah, really, really good uh, book. And uh, it's a with the correlations of uh, cardiac imaging and different modalities. Um, vector cardiography. Uh, and, you know, this is something that's kind of above being a telemetry technician. Uh, if you want to ever impress people or doctors, uh, it's not to say, oh, this patient sent us with them, you know, actually interpret the rhythm. Uh, you have to read up on on uh, 12 leads and I was fortunate enough to where I work at I was able to learn from one of the, the doctors because he was teaching fourth year medical students how to read 12 lead EKGs so you know uh, Dr. Goldberg at UCSF helped me a lot Dr. Uli who just recently passed away helped me a lot too so anyways um, those are the books that I've read